Don't let YouTube decide what information you get. That's your choice. YouTube is deleting our videos and cuts you off from a source of honest reporting. Make sure you don't lose access to NTD's news content and take a quick moment to subscribe to our newsletter so no matter what happens here, you'll keep your access to a trustworthy news source. And Seattle police officers swear to uphold the law and are expected to follow orders. But hundreds may refuse an order to vaccinate against COVID. NTD's Miguel Moreno has more on these officers willing to risk their jobs for their right to choose. Many would agree police officers have a lot on their shoulders. To continue upholding the law in Seattle, officers will need to roll up their sleeves. But unnamed sources tell the post millennial in Seattle that hundreds are prepared to trade in their badges for medical choice. A group called SPD United, founded by a purported Seattle police officer, is encouraging members of the force to withhold their COVID-19 vaccination status. At some point, you have to trust the science. Is it a bargaining issue with the Guild? Absolutely. They should be bargaining now. Jim Fuda is a public safety officer, an expert on crime, law enforcement, and safety. Fuda says he believes that officers should be vaccinated, but should also be offered an alternative like periodic testing. Because the city can't afford to lose more officers like the nearly 20 percent that have called it quits in less than two years as of May. Uh, you, we, you only have so many. So many are down handling uh, uh, protests and, and, and demonstrations and things like that. What about the rest of the tax paying citizens, the ones that need calls for service in other parts of the city that can't get it because there's just no there's just no officers to respond. I mean, it's a it's a catch 22. We we had a city council that wanted to to defund and and uh, and get rid of officers with no plan in place of what to do. SPD United says its mission is one of human rights, constitutional rights, civil liberties and freedom of choice. Mayor Jenny Durkin ordered city employees, which include police, to be fully vaccinated against COVID-19 by mid-October. She hasn't told us how the city will respond to the hundreds of officers they could potentially lose. Miguel Moreno, NTD News. New York State is pushing back against Texas abortion law and what they're calling misinformation about abortions. They're asking Facebook to help with the cause. NTD's Arian Pazdar attended the announcement in Central Park. Governor Hochul and a number of other elected officials got together here to stand up for women's rights to abort their unborn babies. They say that New York has always been leading the fight when it comes to people's personal freedoms, so they feel like it's their duty to speak up. Hochul said so-called misinformation on social media is a major problem when it comes to young women deciding whether to abort or not. She believes that she has the courage to do what she wants to do and say, I'm going to have an abortion. But at the same time, her friends and others are forwarding information and horrible messages and calling her a murderer. Uh, what does that do to the psyche of a young woman? The governor said she wants Facebook to stop misinformation around abortions, similar to what they're doing about vaccine information. And I'm asking Facebook starting today to help clean up the act. Now, in theory, a private company is allowed to limit speech, but only if they're doing so on their own accord. If the private sector entity is not really acting voluntarily, but instead is being pressured by the government or working in collaboration with government, that is tantamount to government censorship. Nadine Strassen is a professor of law and former president of the American Civil Liberties Union. I asked her if the governor's call on Facebook is unlawful. Government officials have their own free speech rights. So the governor of New York, along with our other officials, is certainly free to convey her opinion, to encourage, to urge, to advocate that Facebook take a certain uh, action. But and it's a sort of a factual judgment question. When does her advocacy cross the line from protected speech to unprotected government coercion? In her letter, the governor urged Mark Zuckerberg to curb misinformation. Erin Pastar, NTD News, New York. China's strict three-week quarantine is under question after a new outbreak of the CCP virus. A man who completed 21 days of quarantine upon returning home in China is believed to be the likely source. 
That means the virus can last longer than we thought, or he was infected within China. NTD's Tiffany Meyer has more. Some returning travelers have to do three weeks of quarantine in China. But is it enough? Chinese officials reported a new virus case on Saturday from a man who spent 21 days in quarantine. He tested negative nine times, yet still reportedly brought the virus into the country. That's in southeast China's Fujian province, where a new outbreak of the CCP virus struck. Local officials reported at least 75 cases in the past three days. The first cases were students from a local elementary school. But experts pointed to one of the student's parents, a father who recently returned from Singapore. He's believed to be the likely source of the outbreak. He was tested nine times in quarantine and each time came back negative until he tested positive on Friday. That's 37 days after he entered China, according to state-run media Global Times. How could this happen? Experts can't explain how the virus could remain hidden for so long. Or did he get infected in China? No one knows. Now local officials are telling the public not to leave the area. They have suspended bus and train services, closed cinemas and bars and other facilities, and they've ramped up mass testing. The case is coming on the heels of another Delta-driven outbreak. It spread to more than half of China's provinces in July after emerging in the eastern province of Jiangsu. In response, authorities placed tens of millions of residents under strict lockdown and launched massive tracking and testing campaigns. By late August, health officials announced the outbreak had been effectively brought under control. Due to a lack of transparency under the regime, we cannot verify if the outbreak is actually resolved. But the surging cases do seem to challenge China's zero-tolerance virus policy. The UK's chief medical officers have decided children aged 12 to 15 should be offered a COVID vaccine, despite the vaccine advisory body not recommending it. The medical officers say they took in considerations, including effects on education. NTD's Eddie Aitken has more. The UK's chief medical officers say children aged 12 to 15 should be offered the vaccine. Our view was the benefit exceeded the risk to a sufficient degree that we are recommending to our ministers in all four nations that they make a universal offer, and I want to stress the word offer, of vaccination to children uh, 12 to 15, in addition to the ones that have already been given it. It follows advice from the Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunization, or GACVI, advising against vaccines for the age group. Chris Whitty and his Welsh, Scottish and Northern Irish counterparts say they are recommending the vaccine on public health grounds and it will reduce but not eliminate educational disruption. We do not think that this is a panacea, this is not a silver bullet, it's not a single thing that on its own will do so, but we think it is, a, it is an important and potentially useful additional tool to help ha reduce the public health impacts that come through educational disruption. They asked the GSEVI to look at whether to give second doses to children once more data is available. NHS England have previously been asked to prepare to roll out vaccines for all 12 to 15 year olds. The government is expected to announce support of its medical officer's advice tomorrow. Eddie Aitken, NTD News. And a former federal prosecutor appointed by President Trump is running for governor of Pennsylvania. Now, will Trump endorse him? And what is he offering Pennsylvanians? NTD's Miguel Moreno has that story. We will have an educational system. Former U.S. Attorney Bill McSwain made public his run for governor on Monday. We will make it easy to vote, but hard to cheat. McSwain was joined by his wife and their four kids. He served as federal prosecutor for the Eastern District of Pennsylvania, appointed by then President Donald Trump. And that experience helped get his message across. Now, I know election fraud exists because I actually prosecuted it and convicted ballot-stuffing election officials in Philadelphia while I was U.S. attorney. The former federal prosecutor added that he would put parents before teachers' unions. Pennsylvania has had a political back and forth in gubernatorial elections. Democratic Governor Tom Wolf was re-elected in 2018. A Republican held office before him. In a public statement the same day McSwain announced his run, Wolf accused Pennsylvania Republicans of spreading election conspiracy theories. He said there were no irregularities, no conspiracies, and no fraud that occurred. 
McSwain is one of multiple Republican candidates. He's reportedly asked President Trump for his endorsement, but it's unclear if or when he'll get it for the 2022 election. Miguel Moreno, NTD News. A cricket match was disrupted on Saturday by an unlikely pitch invader, a Cocker Spaniel puppy named Dazzle. I have to take a chance now. Oh, oh, dog. Oh, oh, the dog is the ball. Oh, here we go. Now that is... The incident happened during the semi-final match of the inaugural Women's Clear Currency All-Ireland T20 Cup. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Don't forget to catch all of our programs on TV. NTD Evening News is on every weekday at 6.30 p.m. Find your local NTD channel at ntd.com slash TV. Everything that's reported on television isn't always true, but it should be. NTD, the power of truth. Now available 24-7 on television and streaming platforms.